Am I wrong for keeping my name change a secret for five years? So my 26 female parents decided to name my sister and I after American states. I have permission to share her name, Arizona, and I was called Pennsylvania at birth. Ooh, you got the short end of the stick there, I'm sorry. Yeah, my parents are weird. I guess they thought geographical names were cool, but I think there's a huge difference between calling your child Arizona or Dakota or Paris versus Pennsylvania. <laughs> They're massive Republicans and America lovers, so maybe they wanted to be patriotic. For as long as I can remember, everyone has called me Pen or Penny. My parents insisted that everyone was to call me by my full name, but most people could see how ridiculous my parents are. My sister, 28 female, didn't struggle as much with her name since Arizona just sounds so much better than Pennsylvania, and the Grey's Anatomy character Arizona Robbins made the name seem quite cool as we got older. I was mocked and teased as a child in elementary school because of my parents' insistence on my full name. They would literally berate my teachers for letting me write Penny on my workbooks. When I was 21, I got my legal name changed to Penelope. Most people I had met in college had assumed that I went by Penny as a nickname for Penelope. Even my boyfriend's mother called me Penelope because I was too embarrassed to tell her that Penny was short for Pennsylvania. I kept it a secret from my parents and close family because I knew my parents would go mental and accuse me of disrespecting their choice. I'm getting married this summer to my lovely boyfriend Tom, 31 male and as you all know, you have to say your full name in your wedding ceremony when doing your vows. I knew I had to fess up about the name change because the alternative would be hoping they would keep quiet when they heard me say, I, Penelope, instead of I, Pennsylvania. I invited them over to my home and I tried to tell them in a really calm way that I had changed my name, but they freaked out. They said I was disrespectful and I was calling their name choice dumb. They refused to attend the wedding now. I know I'm not the asshole for changing my name, but my parents are particularly pissed about how I kept it hidden for five years before telling them. Most people I know agree with them. They think that I should have had the courage to be honest with them years ago so they would have had time to get used to it instead of dropping the news on them two months before my wedding and causing all this drama. A few other family members have dropped out and my poor sister, who is the maid of honor, is having a nightmare with this. My parents believe they had the right to know much earlier. Okay, first of all, I'm sorry this happened to you, but I've been all over TikTok and it's all these people giving out horrible baby names that they're really considering to name their child. And I don't know what this whole trend is to name your kids these most god-awful names, but this is a great reminder to those people that your kid will resent you. Your kid will hate it. Your kid will go behind your back and change it. You think it's cool, edgy, unique. It's not. Please, let your kid's name have meaning. Okay? Stop just naming them. I'm gonna name you Ant. P-H-A-N-T, short for elephant. No, stop. I, 43 male, accidentally insulted my partner, 43 female, and she has remained cold ever since. And she wears sweats all the time now. What did you say? We have been a couple for seven years. I only now realize we both view her very differently. From my perspective, she's never been interested in fashion at all. Always wears black jeans. She has dozens of black tops. She doesn't wear makeup, doesn't get her nails done, only does root touch-ups. And I love her and don't care about this at all. From her perspective, apparently, she dresses elegantly and minimalistic. She says she's always wearing no makeup makeup. I guess she means mascara. Not sure. She says she pays the salon every month to color her hair or it would be gray. The reason this all came up is that we met up with friends and one of the women is very fashionable, always done up. I had mentioned in passing to my partner that I loved that she, the other woman, wore vibrant colors. My partner had said she personally isn't a fan of bright colors and in the past when she has tried to wear them, she doesn't like how it looks. I told her if I was a beautiful woman, I'd wear bright colors for attention and that's probably why our friend does it. Anyways, this this was the gist of the conversation. If my partner was getting upset, I wasn't picking up on that. I honestly don't even recall what I was saying that made her mad, but she ended up annoyed with something. I was truly confused, but we ended up in an argument. I told her that based on how she looks, I had no idea she even cared about looks or fashion. She was getting really angry at me, which tends to make me mad too. So I told her that if she cares that much, to my surprise, she should present herself better. She insisted I tell her what I meant, and so I told her that she dresses boring and it makes her look old and dumpy. I also told her I don't care at all, but since she appears to, she should try to dress more fashionable. This was three weeks ago, and she was very angry with me. Now she's not angry, but she's remained cold, and she now has taken a dressing in sweatpants and sweatshirts. She says she won't be dressing nice around me anymore, but I never thought she dressed nice in the first place. Obviously, I put my foot in my mouth, and I have a 
apologized, but she doesn't care. She says she won't forget what I said. I really just want her to drop this. Is this something that needs therapy or just time? I think it's something that needs time and a conversation. For you to say that she dresses boring and dumpy. Dumpy? 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 Like, I under, like, Ugh. you have to understand the reason she's wearing sweats and sweaters around you now, you don't appreciate her when she puts the effort in. Like, that's what she's telling you. Like, she puts effort into her appearance, getting your roots redone. Also, no makeup makeup is makeup. It can be a full face of makeup. The whole point of no makeup makeup is it looks like you're not wearing makeup. It's not just mascara, dude. And for you to be like, oh, you look boring and dumpy. Yeah, she might wear all black, but maybe that's what she's comfortable with. And now she's just proving a point. Like, y you know what? I don't think she's like being cold. I think she's being spiteful. And I would too. I would wear sweats and a hoodie around you. And I would be like, you want to see what boring and dumpy looks like? This is what it looks like. And until you can come to me with a proper apology and not some, I'm sorry, bullshit. And actually tell me why you're sorry. And actually be like, hey, I understand what you mean now. You have been putting a lot of effort into your appearance and I'm sorry it's gone unnoticed. I never wanted to make you feel that way that and i'm very i'm happy with you and the way that you dress and the way that you look that that's how the conversation should go yeah. somewhere along those lines because she's more upset that everything she has done to look presentable and to look good for you has gone completely unnoticed imagine you put effort into your appearance all the time for your significant other even if it's not for your significant other but for yourself too and then someone's like oh you look boring and dumpy that hurts. It's just like it's kind of a tear down. And I think it's very common for a lot of like het cis men like to mm -hmm. be like, oh, well, she's not wearing any makeup. I love girls that don't wear makeup. And then they show pictures of what they like. And there's very clearly makeup. makeup. They just don't get it. And so even if you're doing things for yourself, like you're doing it because it makes you feel good. Light makeup, wearing blacks. And then you have someone like say like, oh, well, what you're doing doesn't look good. It just tears you down. Even if it's not for anyone else but you, it's still like a direct hit. It yeah. still doesn't feel good. It's just like rude. I, and, I can't imagine my partner criticizing me like this. And the, well, also it's kind of just like, yeah, you're being an asshole is the fact that you said, well, there's not really a difference. Like she's just wearing sweats and, a, and like sweaters around me now. There is a difference. Yeah. And until you're able to address that difference, she's going to be cold. I'd be cold too. If there wasn't a difference, you wouldn't have noticed. You wouldn't have noticed. If there wasn't a difference, you wouldn't have been like, oh, she's wearing sweats and a sweater. There's a difference. Use your eyes, sir. Delusional. There are some comments from OP. Uh, to be fair, I wasn't at all aware that she puts effort into looking nice. I'm not trying to be horrible. I'm being honest. I didn't know she cared because she never appeared to try and i only told her she dresses dumpy and looks old when she insisted i explain what i meant to me she has the potential to look great she never appears to do anything to try um sir no offense you lack a lot of social cues there's no self-awareness here yeah it's like it, it, it everything you're saying it sounds like you lack the social awareness to understand like what you are saying yeah is like mean sabotage my ex's dream relationship and he doesn't know it was me am i the asshole oh wow yes uh okay firstly trigger warning the language oh. body fluid language secondly this is a bit long thanks for reading Hey CLP, I'm a relatively new listener, but from the moment I first found your content, I knew I wanted to write in and finally got around to making an account just for this. This story takes place a little over four years ago. My ex and I were minors dating long distance against the advice of our parents. We both managed to keep our relationship hidden from our families for four whole years, in which period of time we dated on and off, stuck in a horrible toxic relationship that neither of us could seem to fully commit to leaving. I'm not going to pin all the abuse on him. Neither of us lived in happy, healthy households. He had a lot of mental illnesses going untreated as he dealt with his own abuse, as was I. And we went from each other's protectors and safe space to something toxic and downright dangerous. I stayed because I had built my whole idea of a future on the foundation of it involving him. Anyway, back to the story. I spent the whole week before my 18th birthday making a poster board for my high school. They asked all seniors to do this, to display the boards along the cafeteria windows and hallways. Mine had a printed photo of him on it, and it was my big reveal to my parents that he and I were dating. I remember so clear that night my own mother made a comment about him being handsome and asked me, aren't you worried about him getting a lot of attention? 
On the phone that night, after eating my big birthday dinner and custom ordered cake, I jokingly brought this up to him and, he, and said, but I have nothing to worry about, right? The silence on the end of the phone was heavy. And I knew before he even said it, there's someone else. Mm. After a moment of silent disbelief, I ended the phone call, ran to the bathroom and threw up. My panic attack lasted well over an hour. I cried so hard I busted veins in my face. Oh. And then I went to his socials and immediately started scrolling his following. When I found nothing, I went to his followers. Now, I had never once considered that he cheated on me, call me gullible or naive. But in the years we had dated, when I started liking someone else, I told him. Sometimes that's why we had broken up. But soon after, he would rope me back in by threatening to kill himself, and I believed him. Anyway, because I never thought he'd cheat, I was not the kind of girlfriend to stalk his social media. This was the first time I'd ever looked up these lists. Yet when I saw her name, I knew it was her because her name was mine, and she looked a lot like me. It was like he was substituting someone in my place. Gradually, I added her on every social media platform, using spam accounts except Snapchat. I used my real account for that. I didn't tell him that I knew who she was. We were in brief contact after this traumatic event. I wanted him to think that I was detached and emotionally distant, and it worked. We basically went back to no contact without much discussion. In my everyday life, I started to feel normal again, went to school, hung out with friends, talked to other boys, moving towards graduating, and even picking out a college to attend. A couple months passed when I casually stalked his new girlfriend and even replied to a few stories here and there, which was more of a test to see what energy she gave me. I got the vibe to her that I was really a total stranger. One afternoon, she posts a happy anniversary photo with him on her Snapchat and mentions the specific amount of time they were celebrating dating. Doing simple math finally confirms it for me that he was dating both of us at the same time for months. I contemplated for days how to reach out to her. I didn't want my contacting her connected to any of my accounts I was using at the time. I didn't want to be blocked. I had actually grown to kind of like her. I thought she deserved to know what he had done. Not just to me, but to us. We were both victims of his cheating, or so I thought. A day or two later, she posted her personal phone number on Facebook offering babysitting services. I texted her number using someone else's phone, so the contact info wouldn't autofill as maybe OP on her end. I asked if this was the right number. She said yes. I spilled the beans. I told her I'm the ex-girlfriend. Wanting to reach out after seeing her anniversary post and inform her that her boyfriend cheated on both of us, that she and I were both the other woman for the last months of he and I's relationship and the first month of theirs. I told her how abusive he had been towards me, all the times he had threatened to self-harm slash self unless I stayed, how he could do it to her if she wasn't careful. Her response told me that she had known about the cheating though. There was no phone call to ask if I was telling the truth. She never said, I can't believe this or that's impossible. She just apologized and blocked the number. I was baffled. I waited patiently for the next week or so to see if she would take action or anything I'd, about anything I'd said. Knowing about the cheating is one thing. Knowing about abuse is another. The day finally came about a week and a half after our one-sided conversation when her bio no longer had his initial. All their photos taken were gone. She deleted all of the TikToks she made about him. She unfollowed his profiles and socials and his socials changed the same way. That same evening, he messaged me just as I thought he would, but by the way he was talking, I realized that she hadn't told him about our conversation at all. He had no clue that I was the reason she broke up with him, and he was coming to me to tell me how devastated he was to lose her. Oh, how bittersweet it was to watch him crawl back to me. I treated him coldly, with no empathy or compassion, nor did I tell him that I was the reason why they had broken up more out of fear that he would go back to her and try to say that I was lying about what all had happened between us. I kind of just said, sounds like that sucks. Sorry to hear. To this day, he doesn't know their breakup was because of me. He spiraled after that and I moved on with my life. Eventually he did too. Today he's engaged to someone new and we're still no contact. To this day, I don't know if what I did makes me an asshole. Maybe they would still be together. Maybe they were happy. Maybe I really did it because I wanted to hurt him more than I wanted to protect her. What I do know is that I have no reason to tell him after all this time. Maybe he's doing better off not knowing. Maybe what I stepped in to do helped him more in a better direction. I've come to the conclusion that I'll never really know, but I'd still love to hear your thoughts. Am I the asshole?
Not the asshole. I do think there was malicious intent behind reaching the point of revealing the truth about the nature of your relationship to the new girlfriend, but also in a way it served both of you in the end. Reminds me of the quote from Perks of Being a Wallflower. We accept the love we think we deserve. And no matter how valid and personal it would have seemed, you were struggling as kids with no support. I'm glad that OP and X have found better things in life. Wish you happiness in the now. I gave flowers to my husband today and it made me realize I might be a terrible wife. Recently, my friends made fun of me and said my husband is the romantic one in our relationship. And apparently he wins by a rather large margin. They even scoffed at the idea that I could be romantic at all. This obviously made me self-conscious about it. As one of my friends went into detail about how much more romantic he is compared to a lot of their boyfriends and husbands and how I am the total opposite. It's been on my mind all week. And today a male coworker of mine was talking about how his wife had given him flowers and how he was surprisingly happy about it. So I thought, why not? He buys me flowers all the time and I really should start trying to be more romantic. So after work, I picked up a bouquet and headed home. When I arrived, he was playing with our five-year-old daughter. I gave him the bouquet and told him, I was thinking about you, so I got you this. He started crying. He cried so, so much. He thanked me, hugged me, and then he went to go look for a vase to put the flowers in. Throughout the night, he cried two separate times randomly. I asked if anything else had happened for him to be that way. And he told me no, that he was just happy that I got him flowers and that he was feeling a bit emotional. And now I'm over here wondering if I'm a terrible wife. I mean, he gets me flowers all the time and I'm never this emotional, like not even close. Now looking back, I don't do nearly as much for him as he does for me. My friends are right. Romantically, he kicks my and I feel absolutely terrible because I love him more than anything. He's my entire world and I couldn't think about my life without him. He's an amazing husband and an even better father. But most of all, he's my best friend. And I guess I don't show him how much I appreciate him. And he doesn't know how much I love him. And that makes me so sad. And it makes me feel even worse because I'm thinking of myself instead of him. I don't know if I should talk to him about it or quietly try to be better. Bye. Um, story time about how this boy stabbed me with a pencil in kindergarten. So a little background information. I was six years old and in kindergarten, obviously. I'm not gonna lie. This story kind of shows that it doesn't matter how old a child is. They can literally still be very mean and yeah. Well, during the middle of the school year, there was this new kid who came to our class and his name was Freddie. Now, Freddie coming in in the middle of the year was kind of sad because everybody already had their friends. They didn't really want to talk to the new kid. And what made it even worse is was the fact that he was a teacher's pet and he was the teacher's favorite so he was always picked to go up to the board and be the line leader which made the kids hate him even more for example during lunch freddie would go and try to sit with some of the kids and they would call the teacher over say that he was doing something that was annoying them or really gross and the teachers would remove him and put him at a table alone by himself and i was one of the kids that didn't really make fun of him i just kind of sat back and laughed which i know is terrible but like for part two Part two about this boy who stabbed me with a pencil in kindergarten. So like I said, everybody would pretty much bully him and I was one of the kids that just sat back and laughed, didn't say anything to him directly. Eventually we were getting in trouble for discluding him. We would all have to stay inside during recess with our heads down on the desk in the dark. So then everybody act like they were gonna include him. Like the one time they were like, okay, we're playing hide and seek, you know, you go hide. And then they never went to find him. So then this kid actually started getting violent. My guess is because the teachers and principal were not doing anything about it. When everybody was walking, he would purposely trip kids. This one time, this girl brought in pencils for the whole class, and she didn't give him one. So he said that he felt sick the one day, and all the kids went out to recess. And he went around and broke every single pencil. And I came in and I found it, so I told the teacher. And then during nap time, he put his mat by me. And when I finally fall asleep, he literally comes over and stabs me in the back of the neck with a pencil. Am I the asshole for confronting my mother-in-law after she hinted about a paternity test? I, 29 female, need some advice on a sensitive family matter that's been causing tension. 
Recently, my mother-in-law made a comment that caught me completely off guard and left me feeling hurt and insulted. During a family gathering, she made a not-so-subtle remark about how much my baby son resembles a family friend. At first, I brushed it off as a harmless joke, but then she followed it up with a comment along the lines of, quote, you never know these days. It wouldn't hurt to be sure. I was shocked and deeply offended by her insinuation that my son might not be my husband's biological child. My husband and I have been faithful to each other, and to have his own mother question our son's paternity felt out of line. I couldn't let it slide, so I confronted her privately and expressed how her words had hurt me. She tried to play it off as a joke, but I could tell that there was more underlying suspicion behind it. Now my husband thinks I overreacted and should just let it go, but I can't shake off the hurt and mistrust that her comment has caused. I told him I won't be attending any family gatherings, and he said that I better not if I will confront his mother whenever she makes a joke. She goes on to add, I never said I'm against a paternity test. I felt hurt because she did this in front of the whole family. Family friend is a 47 male married with three kids. Top comment, tell her that your husband looks like cousin Bob and that the father-in-law should get a paternity test to make sure he is the father. Not the asshole. Mother-in-law was way out of line and your husband is a for not standing up for you. No, you're not the asshole. I think you handled that situation completely fine. Mother-in-law should apologize. Come on. Oh, my. What are our thoughts, y'all? I hooked up with a guy who bullied me in high school. Let's talk about it. So I had to move in to where he lived, like not in his house, but like on his like property, I guess, because my parents were working for his parents. My mom is like a cleaner, stuff like that. And my dad is just like a handyman. And these people were like wealthy. Like, you know how there's people who are rich, there's people who are wealthy, they were wealthy. First time I met him, my mom like sent me to go get something or go ask him a question or something. And I ended up walking in on this conversation. And I didn't really hear a lot, but I think he thought I heard more than, than I did. And like after that, he was just not the nicest to me. Anyway, like I said, after that moment, he was just like nasty to me. He basically hated me. And I didn't really have a lot of friends at this new school, because like I said, we had just moved there and I was only gonna be there for like a year and he made making friends like that much harder. He knew stuff like steal my steal my books from, for school, like to where I couldn't do my homework and he was just like mean to me and other in front of other people, made fun of me in front of other people and just like actually just treated me like shit. But one of his friends was actually really nice to me and was like one of the only people in the school who was nice to me. So I started dating his like one of his best friends. And if I thought that pissed him off before, oh, that made him like even more mad and like made him hate me even more. So my boyfriend like defend me in front of him. He just still hated me and he made like his other friends hate me too. So like it was just my boyfriend out of his friend group who was kind to me. But one night my boyfriend had asked me to meet him at the party that was gonna be at his house. And like I said, I lived on the property, but like not at his house. So I ended up going, I go to like try to find my boyfriend and the guy that doesn't like me finds out that I'm there and is like making a, deal, a big deal out of everything and is like, I need to talk to you. And we end up like back in my room talking and arguing, whatever. And then somehow we end up kissing. I can't even tell you how that happened because we hated each other, but there was attraction. I don't know, we end up kissing. And it was at that moment right after that he told me he'd actually just kissed my sister before that. And she tasted like me about that. Okay, tastes like you, only actually breaking up with his friend because of him and I end up like after graduation moving away and not coming back to that town for a really long time because of him and like this whole big thing that happened. Anyway, 10 years later, he comes into where I work and I'm wearing this like ridiculous like Pudoress outfit. So I go up to take this these two guys orders and I look at the one guy as he looks up to me to order and of course I recognize him immediately. I clock him immediately. And unfortunately, he is still like so like even more handsome, like even more gorgeous than he was. I like don't even want to be talking to him and he leaves and on the tip like on the check he puts like if you want your tip come to this address which I thought was like such a dick move because like just tip me what you're supposed to tip me and leave. Obviously I come with that up and I don't go. Then he tracks me down and he makes me an offer that I cannot feel. My best guy friend told me he was in love with me two days before my wedding. I have been with my fiance for three years and engaged for a little over a year. Me and my guy best friend have known each other since freshman year of college and we're all in our early 30s right now. This morning, to my surprise, I woke up from a long ass text from my guy best friend at 6 a.m. Basically, the message was him pouring his heart out to me, saying that he's always been in love with me, but he just hoped that I would end up breaking up with my fiance at some point, and he asked me to run away with him. He also added in there the little, I needed to tell you before it was too late. 
To be honest, I just feel gross and sad. I've never had feelings for him beyond a platonic love. I just keep typing up a message and then deleting it over and over because I have no idea what to say. I haven't even told my fiance yet because I really don't want him to worry about me so soon before the wedding. But I know I'm obviously going to have to tell him. One of the worst things about the situation is that my guy best friend has also become my fiance's friend. I have no idea how to word or freeze this situation to my fiance in a way that won't make him freak out. Am I wrong for telling my parents and my brother that if they wanted his ex removed by wedding pictures, they'd have to pay for it? My brother goes through women like I go through socks. I gave him a plus one for my wedding two years ago. He brought his girlfriend of that time. When we were doing the family pictures, he wanted his girlfriend in the pictures. I said we could do some with her and some without. He got mad that I allowed my sister to have her fiancé in all of the pictures and my other brother was allowed to have his boyfriend of 5 years but that I had the audacity to exclude his girlfriend of the week. My parents said that they didn't want any flooding and to just include her. They were paying for everything so I said fine. She isn't in all of our pictures, just the ones with our family and both families. Now my brother is engaged and we had the family over last weekend. His fiance saw our wedding pictures on the wall and got into a fight with my brother. He never told her that he had been in a serious relationship with her nemesis. He tried explaining that they only dated a very short while. She called bullshit because she was included in the family picture. She asked to see our wedding album. Sure enough, the girl was in multiple pictures with the family and the in-laws. My brother finally calmed her down but has asked me to take down the pictures or have his ex removed. I said that it was expensive so he would have to pay for it. He tried complaining to our parents. They said that I was being childish. I reminded them that they were the ones who insisted I give in to him. I said that they were welcome to pay for the editing. They said I was a jerk and that they already paid for the pictures once. Tell me your brother is the golden child without telling me your brother is the golden child. Sheesh. Story time about how I unintentionally almost drowned my sister. So a little background information. I was eight years old and my sister was five. And during the summer, my sister and I never really got to go swimming because pool memberships were really expensive and my family did not want to take us to a public pool. So every summer we would go to my grandpa's house so that way we could go swimming. But he lived like two hours away so we would only go there once a summer. And since we only got to go swimming this one time, we would usually be in the pool 24-7. So fast forward, we're all at my grandpa's house. And I finish my dinner first, so I run outside and I put my sister's floaties on because I'm pretty sure that mine actually popped. Now, quick thing, we were allowed to go into the pool without floaties on if we stayed in the shallow end of the pool because we couldn't swim for shit. Anyway, so I put her floaties on and I go to the deep end and she comes outside like a bat out of hell and she starts screaming and crying. And being the big sister I am, I'm just swimming around, ignoring her, enjoying my time in the pool, like for part two. Part two about how I unintentionally almost drowned my sister. Like I said, I have her floaties on. I'm in the deep end of the pool. She's screaming at me, telling me to take them off. I'm ignoring her. And then what does her crazy ass decide to do? She decides to get into the pool and try and get them from me. Now, my sister was super tiny. Like, even being in the shallow end of the pool, she really couldn't stick her head above the water. Now, I'm pretty sure that all swimming pools are like this, but there's a slope that goes into the deep end, and it's super slippery. So she comes over to try and get the floaties from me, and then she slips. It was literally like a cartoon where the cartoon characters are moving their feet backwards really fast. And I thought that she was just joking around, so I'm just sitting there staring at her until she actually starts choking, and then my dad hurries up and runs outside, thank God. I feel like dads just have superpowers to know whenever their kids are in trouble. Anyway, so he jumps into the pool and he saves her. He ends up spraining his ankle and I wasn't allowed in the pool for the rest of the weekend. Now, of course, this had me pretty pissed off, but now that I'm an adult, I can see. Well, there is an update. Okay. That was posted 15 months after. 15 months? 15 months after that original post. Oh my God. Update. Yeah, All so right. a whole over a year. Seb did end up flying back to Canada January of last year. Before he flew, we talked about the situation and I told him I've been in contact with a divorce lawyer. He was surprised. He said he didn't expect me to leave him just because he needs to be with his family. I remember at this time, all I felt was anger. I was so mad that he was making it sound like I'm the bad person. Nevertheless, the conversation didn't end well. He left without any closure, but he said he will be back in March. I was left alone. January to March last year was the darkest days of my life. I knew I did nothing wrong, but I ended up blaming myself for everything. I hate to admit, but I canceled the meeting with my lawyer as I started to doubt if I really wanted to leave him or not. I love him so much to the point that I'm willing to accept him again when he's back. During the entire time he was gone, he rarely called to check on me. 
I had to call him most of the time. I feel so alone and sad. I begged for his attention to give me some of his time to be with me again. All those times he kept telling me that Tanya needs him more. March, I was expecting him to come back so we could talk, but he didn't come back. He says he needs to stay more and promised me he would be back in May. I don't know what happened to me when I got that call from him early March to tell me he won't be flying back to Australia. At the time, I felt like there's a switch that suddenly turned off because somehow I stopped caring. When he told me he won't be back until May, I knew I had to move forward without him. Fast forward to May and he was back. That day we sat down to talk. He broke down and said, I can't lose you too. When he said that, I thought Tanya was gone, but no, she's not. And as far as I know, she's still alive to this day. I asked what happened and he told me that Tanya asked him to go back to be with me. He said that Tanya is sorry for everything. Seb didn't want to leave her, especially when he saw how bad she was doing. They had a fight and according to him, Tanya wants him out of her life. If I was the same dumb person, I would totally accept him back. But at this time, all I can think was he's only back because Tanya doesn't want him anymore. I let him cry. I comforted him and and let him stay in my apartment. A week after, I told him I'm divorcing him. At first, he refused to leave. It was a long and painful process, but on my birthday in July, he realized that he couldn't manipulate me anymore. By August, he was back in Canada. Divorce is not finalized yet, but we have been separated since he left. He tried to contact me several times last year. Tanya also tried to contact me. Everyone, including my family, tried to convince me to give him a second chance. But that day in March, when I finally came back to my senses, I knew nothing can make me change my mind. As of now, I'm doing fine alone. I got promoted last year and moved to a bigger apartment near the beach. I found new friends and recently getting into Pilates. Traveled Australia and New Zealand and met some amazing people. I feel like a completely different person. Last year was a major turning point in my life. Seb still bothers me from time to time, and he knows I couldn't care less anymore. Sometimes I talk to him. I still care, but not as much. I've been told by our common friends that he's not doing well. He became an alcoholic and couldn't get a good job because of it. He's mostly couch surfing because Tanya doesn't want him to live with her. LOL that bitch. My husband is having an affair and I'm okay with it. My husband Frank is the most loving, caring, and attentive man I've ever known. The problem is I love him like a friend or like a brother. I care for him so much and I want him to be happy but I just don't love him romantically. He knew this before he married me to save me from my bad family situation. He did obviously hope that I would have gotten feelings for him, but I just never did and I still don't have those type of feelings for him. We're really great partners otherwise in life and in our business and I enjoy being intimate with him. We did talk about the possibility of divorce, but I just never wanted one and I just don't think I'm ever going to want one. I'm perfectly fine with the way things are right now. A divorce, even the most mutual divorce and amicable divorce, would bring problems to our business that I just really don't need right now. But that being said, I really didn't want to keep the man that saved my life in a cage, so I let him be in relationships with other women. My husband is having an affair and I'm okay with it for a full two years he didn't do anything but three months ago he started seeing a woman he came to me and confessed that he had feelings for this woman and she reciprocated them when he came to me he was feeling super guilty and upset i hugged him and let him know that i really wanted this for him i wanted him to be with a partner who loved him as much as he loved them it feels really fine. I thought that he was gonna neglect me a little bit. He's just as attentive, affectionate, and caring as ever. I can see that this relationship is doing him a lot of good. She also knows that he's married and she's completely fine with it. Although I never really wanted to meet her, I did some detective work and she seems like a perfectly fine, well-adjusted woman. I'm really not worried about her hurting Frank or turning him against me. She's also not interested in marriage, which is exactly what I need. Frank is really happy and that makes me really happy. I told him that I would be open to discussing a separation, not a divorce, if his relationship with this woman ends up getting more serious, but things are fine for now. I, 30 female, stepmother, 45 female, wore white to my wedding on purpose. Am I right to cut her out? My parents divorced when I was 13. My mother, 55 female, found out that my father, 57 male, was cheating on her with my now stepmother. Sarah, 45 female. My mom was heartbroken by this, and so was I. I saw him after their divorce, but only when I was forced to. Weekends, some holidays. I was very angry with him the entire time and actually refused to speak to him for about six months. When I was 15, he married Sarah. 
I didn't want to go to the wedding, but my mom and dad insisted I go. Because of that, and because I was an angry, spiteful, and rude teenager, I decided that I'd do something to ruin the wedding. I know, as an adult, this was a horrible thing to do. I wore a blue dress to the wedding, but under it, I'd hidden a white dress. I went to the wedding with my dad and younger brother, Sam, 25, in my grandfather's car, and when we got to the church, I pretended I had to nip back to the car. I went outside, took the blue dress off, and came back in a white dress. Both my dad's family and the bride's family were furious, but they obviously couldn't kick a 15-year-old out of a wedding, so they just carried on and got married, but it clearly spoiled it. Even in the photos outside of the church, Sarah looks pissed off. Sarah's family wanted to kick me out, but my dad held it together and told them to ignore it. This seemed to be going okay until the videographer asked me to say something on camera, and I said, let's hope this one lasts. Oh my god, what? Badass, I love it though. At that point, my dad called a taxi and had it take me home. He stopped insisting I visit him and I didn't see him for a good few years. My father and I rekindled our relationship when I was in my early 20s. I had a health scare and we reconnected over that. We've been on good terms since then, although Sarah has never forgiven me, even though I've apologized to her multiple times. Real apologies too. I do feel very bad about what I did to her. It wasn't fair and I'm sorry. A month ago, my husband and I got married. I noticed during the ceremony that Sarah was wearing a white bridal style, not exactly wedding dress, but similar dress. When I caught her eye, she was smirking at me. I didn't let it affect anything and just carried on with the wedding. We still had a great time and I think aside from my immediate family who got the reference, everyone else just thought she was a bit strange. Later on, when we were reading the guest book, I saw that she had written in exactly what I said to her 15 years ago. After both of these incidents, I spoke to my husband and told him that I didn't want her in my life anymore. That I thought if we had children, she'd be a toxic influence in their lives and I think I would prefer to cut her out. He agreed if that's what I wanted. I told my dad that he's always welcome to visit us but that I'll no longer be having contact with his wife. My dad basically said it's both of us or neither of us and my mom also thinks I should reconsider for the sake of keeping the peace. Am I overstepping the mark by going no contact? Damn, talk about holding a grudge. Imagine having beef with a 15 year old, 15, who you cheated on her father with and broke up her home, her happy home her mom and dad have. Imagine like, wow, I wonder why this child hates me and her dad when I broke up their marriage and I'm getting married to her dad now after cheating on him with, you know. Imagine, why, why is this 15 year old acting out as a teenager when she probably has all this emotional damage that I caused by her dad and didn't get therapy to talk about and I just got married to him, why? And then be petty enough to do that same shit to her, what, how many years later? What a loser. Imagine having beef with your husband's little ass kid. I, 24 male, am a groomsman, and my girlfriend, 24 female, is not a bridesmaid. She wants me to step down. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friendship circle that formed in middle school. We're mid-20s now. They're my closest group of friends. It's a mix of men and women. One of the men is getting married this year and has asked me, along with other men in the group, to be his groomsman. I gladly accepted. His fiance has asked all of the women in the group, except my girlfriend, to be bridesmaids. My girlfriend is really upset by this because she thinks it's rude and it'll be awkward at the wedding. Here's the thing. The fiance and my girlfriend are not friends. Their personalities clash and they both actively avoid talking to each other when the group is together. My girlfriend asked me to step down as groomsman, stating the aforementioned reasons. I told her that while I understand she's upset, the groom is a friend of 10 years and I will not be giving up my spot in the wedding party. In my opinion, the bride and groom have made individual decisions as to who is in their wedding party and the awkwardness does not supersede their decisions. I believe I'm just in my decision and think she's being unreasonable. How do I discuss this with her in a productive manner? He goes on to edit or add an edit. The girlfriend nor the fiance are part of the original friend group. Both were absorbed into it when we started talking. They've been together for six years. We've been together for four. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she was dating my biological father? I'm a product of an affair between my mom and another guy, but fortunately, my dad decided to forgive my mom and keep me. I would say that I had a pretty good upbringing, but I don't look a lot like the rest of my family. And when I was growing up, I was always asking questions about this, like why I had different traits than all of my other family. When I was 17, my mom took me out for ice cream and introduced me to my bio father. She told me that she thought I was old enough to know the truth and she told me about the affair. 
But while this was all happening, she was also making me promise that I wouldn't tell my older sister and hammering along with my bio father the fact that he would never want to be a part of my life and never is going to be a part of my life. To be honest, it was a lot to take in, but I kind of just learned to suck it up and move on with my life. Fast forward to the present. My older sister has always just gravitated towards older men. We always like to joke that it was a result of too many George Clooney movies growing up. However, this is where the story gets interesting. Two months ago, am I the asshole for telling my sister she was dating my biological father? Two months ago, my sister shared a photo on social media of her and her boyfriend. In my shock, it was my bio father. I debated what to do for a couple of days, but then I ultimately decided that she deserved to know. I told her the truth and she didn't really take it well and ended up dumping him. She wasn't angry with me. She was honestly amused and was making jokes that since she's banged my dad now, she has extra power over me to boss me around. But my mom, on the other hand, is absolutely furious. She said that I divulged a secret that wasn't mine to share and that I had no business telling anyone. She said that since my bio father isn't related to my sister in any way, that it didn't matter if they dated and it's not like they were talking about marriage anyway. It's now been two months and she's still angry, still snide, and she's always trying to make comments about how I'm a traitor and how I can't be trusted with secrets, so beware. At the time, I obviously thought that I was doing the right thing by telling my sister, but I've never ever seen my mom this angry before. And the fact that she sustained this anger for a solid two months is crazy. I'm starting to worry. Did I do something really shitty? Am I the asshole? Let me know what you think you would have done in this situation. Story time about falling into a dug up grave. So a little background information, my dad was a teenager in the late 1950s and he used to work at this restaurant that was near a local cemetery. Now to get to work, he could either run through the cemetery or go around the cemetery. And more often than not, he would just go through the cemetery because nobody wants to add an extra 10 or 15 minutes to their walk, especially to work. Now being 15 years old, going through the cemetery at night still low-key scared him. So the one night he got off of work and he was running home through the cemetery and he fell into a dug up grave. And my dad was not a big guy, so he tried to get out of there as best as he could, but after a few hours, he just gave up. Now, I guess some other kid had the same exact idea that he did, so he hears footsteps quickly approaching the grave, and then all of a sudden, some kid falls into the dug-up grave with him. So after a few minutes of watching this kid try to get out of the grave as well, my dad goes, you know you're never gonna get out of here, right? My dad said this kid jumped up six feet and ran. Pretty funny story from my dad's point of view, but pretty scary for the other kid. My girlfriend found out that I was taking one for the team when we first met, and now she's spiraling in insecurity. How do I get her to be confident in my attraction to her again? About two years ago, I was at a party with a friend of mine who we'll call Josh. Me and Josh were just vibing to the music and chilling when he suddenly spots two girls. The one he was interested in was this pretty blonde while the other was her heavier friend. That's not to say her friend was unattractive, but just a little noticeably bigger than what could be considered average weight. Anyway, Josh turned to me and urged me to be his wingman by taking one for the team and distracting her friend while he chatted with the blonde. After a little back and forth, I decided to just do it and be a good friend. So we made our way over and made our move, where I would go in first and start chatting with their friend while Josh began flirting with the girl he was interested in. Again, this friend I was talking to was by no means unattractive, just a bit heavier than what most guys, myself included at the time, would go for. I thought she was very sweet, even though I was just talking to her out of obligation. It didn't really matter anyway, because ultimately, the girl Josh was into already had a boyfriend apparently and had seemingly brushed him off, with him eventually patting me on the back to signify I didn't have to chat with her friend anymore. So I decided to politely end the conversation, however, not before she asked for my Instagram, which I decided to give her. I didn't really think much of it at the time, and I was certain I would never see her again. However, a couple of days later, I ran into the same girl in my school's campus store. I didn't really recognize her at first, but she seemed to know me immediately. We decided to chat for a bit, and I was reminded of her name, Megan. Anyway, it was really just small talk until Megan suddenly seemed a little awkward. I asked her if everything was alright, and she replied that nothing was wrong, but she wanted to know if I wanted to go out with her sometime. This actually came as a shock to me, because it was the first time a girl had ever made the first move and asked me out. So, even though she wasn't really my type at the time, I said yes. And that was probably the best decision of my life. Me and Megan really hit it off, and before long, we were in a serious relationship. 
Any qualms I had about her weight were gone immediately after the first time we slept together, and I actually found her body to be really soft and comforting. I had never felt so relaxed cuddling with someone before I met her. We've been dating for two years now, and I absolutely love her. She's my everything, and I have even been thinking of proposing as soon as we are both done with school. Everything was perfect until last month. Last month, we hosted a small get-together just for a few friends who were also in relationships, like a couple's game night sort of thing. It was here where Josh, who has been my good friend for years, was pretty drunk and made a joke about how if he had never forced me to take one for the team back then, I would never have found the love of my life. The joke didn't really register to me as anything negative, and I was also drunk, so I just laughed it off. Megan was cuddled up next to me on the couch, though, and asked what Josh meant by that. I told her nothing, but Josh, being the drunk idiot he was, elaborated and told her the story about how we met through my perspective at the time. Megan just said, oh, and didn't really react, so I figured she just brushed it off. However, the rest of the night, she seemed kind of distant and even a little sad. Finally, once everyone had left, she let it all out and started crying. She was essentially in shock because this whole time she thought I approached her then was because I was interested in her, and learning that it was because I was forced to seemed to bring back old insecurity within her. It doesn't help that she's actually gained weight since back then, even though I don't really have any problem with that and have told her that multiple times. I immediately gave her the full story about how I fell for her right after that and I have loved and adored her ever since. She seemed reassured and we even cuddled the whole night after that. Since the night though, she's been acting differently. It's like she's lost her confidence around me. She only wears large baggy clothes even though she never used to before. She refuses to change with me in the room and hardly eats in front of me. Before I used to playfully tickle her stomach sometimes and she'd always smile and play along. Now she always seems insecure when I so much as accidentally graze it. She also refuses to sleep with me without a shirt on. So far, I sat her down multiple times and explained that her body is incredibly attractive to me and that there's no one more beautiful in my eyes than her. But it's like she doesn't believe me. Lately, I've been thinking about offering her to come to the gym with me, but I'm scared she may be more insecure at that suggestion. How do I get her to believe that I love her no matter what she looks like? That I truly adore her in all aspects? I just want her to be confident in herself again. My wife, female 32, recently had wine spilled on her by my best friend, female 31, during our wedding. Now she is demanding that I, male 33, cut ties. Me and Allie met through a mutual friend in 2012 during a pub quiz at university. I was quite attracted to her and actually told her so by the end of the evening. But she told me she had a boyfriend even though she was flattered all the same. Fast forward three years, I met Eliza at the Edinburgh Fringe and we just clicked immediately politics, movies, music, whatever the subject approach, there was a spark that I'd never felt with anyone else. Like she just made sense to me. Her personality was just vivid. It's hard to describe, but I'll try. On first impression, she was so knowledgeable and enthusiastic, I was taken aback by her intensity. From that point onwards, we were inseparable, and I was dead certain for our future together long before we got engaged. Enter Allie again. I started a new job at an advertising firm with position and web design, and she was one of the only people I knew. At first, it was a little awkward given our history, especially considering that she was now married to the boyfriend she was dating back then. But there was no one else I knew at the firm, and we both had partners at this point, so it couldn't hurt to be friends, right? And to be honest, I'm glad because I feel like our chemistry as friends superseded any potential we might have had as a couple. She's clever and had a bit of a cheeky personality. I'm quite dry and sarcastic myself, so I reckon we have a pretty fun dynamic. Dynamic. Eliza doesn't seem to feel that way though. Sometimes when it's been the three of us, she's expressed a feeling of being left out or that Allie has been making fun of her. I don't see it. It's just our dynamics. But there has been a couple of nights when Eliza's been in tears because of something that Allie said. One time, Eliza got out of her seat and Allie sat down where she was sitting to show me a video on YouTube. When Eliza came back in, she saw Allie leaning next to me and she was upset for the rest of the night. Sometimes there have been times when Allie has said something that Eliza has read as a come on. Like when I said I missed swimming because I felt out of shape, Allie said the two of us should go together with a playful punch. Eliza didn't say anything at the time, but her discomfort was visible. Things really came to a head though on our wedding and I think the stress of it might have gotten to Eliza. During the reception, Allie bumped into her and red wine spilled all over her dress. She was bawling the entire evening. We're now on our honeymoon and Eliza has said she hopes for a fresh start but she feels Allie might have spilled her wine on purpose. She suggested that I cut ties with her and if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what I want to do. Where do I go from here? You cut ties with Allie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god, you're married. I understand that it's totally possible that like you could just be reading into things wrong. But if on more than one occasion you find your significant other crying, crying. over something that one of your friends did, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I've never in my entire life spilt wine on anybody, especially not red wine on their wedding dress. Can you that imagine? That is sabotage. Like, yeah, that is yeah. intentional. I don't like Ali. I just found out that my husband hired my friend to strip at his bachelor party. Four years ago, I married my husband after dating him for six years, so we've been together for 10 years now. My friend Rebecca has been stripping since she was 21 years old, but she quit last year and she's about to have a baby and be a stay-at-home mom. Since our children, we are super close. We're basically neighbors and she lives at the end of the road that we live on. Last week, one of my husband's friends was visiting our house and I had made plans with Rebecca to go shopping, but I totally forgot to cancel. Rebecca came over at the same time that my husband's friend was over. After Rebecca had left, my husband's friend made a comment about how he can't believe that me and Rebecca are still friends after the bachelor party. Later that day, I asked what his friend meant when he said that and my husband refused to talk to me about it or even comment at all. Of course, we got in a huge fight over that. And then finally, he ended up telling me that Rebecca was a stripper at his bachelor party. I was so angry, so I texted Rebecca in the heat of the moment and I told her that I do not want her around anymore. It's been a week since I sent that text and she still hasn't responded to my text message. I feel so betrayed by both of them and I know it's her job, but I still just am icked out about it. I miss Rebecca as a friend a lot, but I'm also just super hurt and I have no idea what to do. Am I wrong for how I responded when my husband told his brother that he's lucky his wife is mute? Ah! My sister-in-law, my husband's brother's significant other, is mute. She's been happily married to my brother-in-law for one year and I have been married to my husband for five. We were invited to my mother-in-law's house for dinner a few days ago. I have to say, it was the weekend that I was too tired from working, looking after the kids, doing household chores, etc. But my husband insists on me being part of these weekly dinner gatherings. My brother-in-law came and brought his wife with him. We all sat at dinner and discussed many topics and then my sister-in-law started using sign language with my brother-in-law. My husband was smirking for some reason and then waited till they stopped, then turned to his brother and said, Man, you're lucky your wife is mute. Your house must be so peaceful and quiet all the time, right? This is a blessing. He said this while locking eyes with me. My sister-in-law was stunned. They all stared at me awkwardly, like I knew he meant to say that I was loud and noisy at home, which is not true at all. I decided to pitch in and reply with, Yeah, well, she's lucky for not having a button-pushing jerk barking to bands at her all day long and gaming while she's juggling everything from childcare to household chores to work all by herself. Silence. He figured I was referring back to him, which I was, and his face went to normal, to red, to pale. He excused himself to the bathroom, then later, things were really awkward. We got in the car, and he lost it on me completely. He said I disrespected, badmouthed, and demeaned him in front of his family. Okay, which is exactly what you did to her. Oh, and... Ugh, ugh. I pointed out how he was indirectly insulting me with the you're lucky your wife's mute remark but he called me petty and said that I took it personally and acted insensitively and rudely towards him. We got home and he went radio silent and has basically been sulking about what happened till this very hour. Am I the asshole for my response to him? Don't dish it out if you can't take it. People get so by her. It's like the bully. They bully everyone and then when someone stands up and says something back to them, they're like, why are you in my video? <laughs> Story time about how I got catfished by my ex-boyfriend. So a little background information. I was 16 years old and I was in 10th grade. And I have been dating this guy who we're going to call Jack since my freshman year in high school. Now the first year of our relationship was absolutely amazing. No complaints. But then fast forward, we get into 10th grade and all of a sudden he changes. Now Jake had always been a super nice person. But for some reason this year, he decided that he wanted to be extra friendly to people, mainly girls. 
I didn't really think anything of it at the time because he told me he wanted to change up his characteristics, whatever the fuck that means. But the one day I'm in the library and then my friend Chloe walks in and she shows me a video of him rubbing some girl's thigh. And then when I confronted him about it, he was like, babe, she was forcing me to. I promise it'll never happen again. Well, I believed him. But because of this, I started paying way more attention to his actions. I realized he started going out way more and he would always have his location off. And when I confront him about it, he absolutely flips out on me, like for part two. Part two about how I got catfished by my ex-boyfriend. So like I said, after I confront him about this, he decides that he's going to flip out on me, victimize himself, of course. So him and I end up breaking up. And then five months later, I meet this really cute guy on Snapchat. And you know, him and I are talking for a while. And of course, I start to catch feelings. And then bam, him and I start dating. Now, I'm not even going to beat around the bush with this one. Um, I was willing to date anybody because I was lonely. The next day, whenever I go to school, Jake keeps smiling at me and tries to talk to me, but I'm ignoring him because what the fuck? Well, over the next two days, my new boyfriend starts acting like a total jerk. He starts asking me for nudes 24-7. He never wanted to talk to me. Well, the one day him and I were having a really good day and I decided to send them to him. And then a week later, Jack walks up to me and shows me my pictures. And he's like, if you don't do the nasty with me, I'm posting these everywhere. Now, my parents are super strict and I didn't want them seeing it. So I did it with him. And he ended up posting them everywhere and then telling everybody that we did the nasty. Am I the asshole for being suspicious of my girlfriend's friend after she tried to test me? I, 30 male, have been dating my girlfriend, Olivia, 23 female, for the last one year. We met at a coffee shop near my office, which I used to frequent to get my morning coffee, and she worked there as a barista. I asked her out, and she said yes. Things have been great so far, and I feel like we are compatible in terms of what we like and want from a relationship. She has a group of three girlfriends she is close with. These girls are always very welcoming to me, but they seem very immature compared to my friends. One of the girls is Harper, 23 female. Harper is awesome and we get along well since we like the same video games and music. Recently, Olivia and I have been talking about taking our relationship to the next stage and I asked her to move in with me. She spends four to five nights a week at my place anyways, so I asked her to just move in. For some reason, her parents are the most excited about this as she is finally moving out of their house. She also told her friends about the same. On Saturday, Olivia decided to stay back at her parents' house to pack some of her things. Harper messaged Olivia and me that she and her friends were downtown and asked if we wanted to hang out with her. Olivia was gone, but she told me it was okay if I wanted to go for drinks with the girls. I had nothing to do, and I joined them. It was all three of her friends and me, and we went to a few bars. We lost the two other girls midway, and it was just Harper and I. I was constantly messaging Olivia about what was going on as I started to get uncomfortable with the situation. As it was getting late, I told Harper I would get an Uber for her to drop her home. She told me that she wanted to go dancing. At this point, she was visibly drunk. I called an Uber for her anyway. As we were leaving the bar, Harper grabbed my t-shirt and tried to kiss me. I immediately pulled back and told her that she was making me uncomfortable and I would let it pass since she was drunk. She apologized to me. As we were waiting for the Uber, she again started getting handsy and told me, quote, let's go back to my place and no one needs to know. I snapped at her at this point and told her to please shut up until she got in the car. Finally, the Uber came and I got Harper to get in. She kept on apologizing to me and telling me, quote, please don't tell Olivia. Finally, her Uber left and I tracked it on my phone to make sure she reached home. I asked Olivia to check with Harper's roommate if she got home safely to her apartment. As I was walking home, I called Olivia and told her what happened. Olivia was crying and I was genuinely pissed at Harper's behavior. Olivia tried to call Harper at night, but her phone was going straight to voicemail. In the morning, Olivia came home and told me, Hey, it's all good. It was just a test. I was angry at this point and I asked Olivia to explain what was going on. So, Harper messaged Olivia in the morning that Olivia was really lucky that I passed the test. I asked Olivia if she was involved in this and she did not know that Harper was going to test me. According to Harper, she wanted to make sure that I was not a cheater before Olivia moved in with me. Hence, she wanted to see if I would accept her advances. I told Olivia that Harper is full of shit because she was drunk and there was no way she was thinking straight. Moreover, when I snapped at her, she apologized and told me not to tell you anything. Harper is just trying to cover her mistake and is giving a bullshit excuse. Olivia thinks I'm overreacting. According to her, Harper is her best friend and will never betray her. Although the test was stupid and Harper should apologize to me, 
She was just looking for Olivia's best interests. Also, Olivia feels nothing happened, so I should not make a big deal of it. I just feel Olivia is dumb and cannot see that her friend tried to get her boyfriend to cheat. <laughs> I just feel she is too immature to understand Harper's true intentions, and it's bothering me. I told her to stay away from Harper if she wanted us to have a happy relationship. Am I the asshole to tell Olivia to not believe Harper's lies? Or do you think Harper's story checks out and I'm the one overreacting? I've never heard of anyone hitting on their friend's boyfriends to test the relationship, and it seems like the most bullshit excuse.